we started using these in overhauling. So Chip had the first set of them when they came out years and years ago. But they are my favorite wheel dollies. The wheels are soft. They're easy to move around the shop. They go well over grates. You have wash grates in your shop because if you're in California and you're recycling the water and some things. They still move very well from body to paint. I can put the car anywhere. And if you'll notice on these, they also have some pinch clamp uh, modifications so I can set them on the clamps, especially if I've got threading collision damage or I'm taking wheels and tires off. They also have approved um, caliber mounts for like shaking bins and lots of different options. Keep me honest here, Zach. So any way that you need to anchor the car, to move the car around, DJS has a solution for you. So I can't live without mine. They're definitely one of the coolest tools in my shop. And I recommend them to everybody. When they come and watch me, they're like, I gotta get a set of those. So that's one of my first cool tools. That's a cool tool. That's an awesome tool. Now that's check out this tool. cool tool here. This is the Chief Vulcan ABU. Is it like, wait, Vulcan? Isn't that a Vulcan? Wasn't he a Vulcan? Uh, looks, okay, I don't know. Looks like a big light, but uh, what we've got here, it's a big stapler. We're starting stapling cars back to get the red <laughs> rivets and blue. Cool tool. Cool tool. So the neat thing with the Vulcan is we're removing adhesives from some of these vehicles that are rivet, rivet bonded or adhesively bonded. We want to break that bond. We want to use heat to help adjust that bond. This is an induction heater type of unit. But what's different about this one is you can actually set the max temperature. So if you don't want it to go above 400 degrees to cause any damage to the panel, or there's you know a uh, steel panel, or if the vehicle manufacturer has a recommendation for a heating limit, you can set the temperature on this unit, and it won't exceed that temperature, and you can go, go about your repairs and move that adhesive more easily. Uh, so it's a pretty cool tool as well. That's a great tool, Jason, because right now when I talk to technicians, we get a lot, we get really caught up in the panel that we're either working on or replacing, and we forget about what that panel's attached to or what may be behind it. So when you're thinking of heat and what the heat you're putting in the panel, it's not just about the panel. You gotta think about what's behind that, the uh, wheelhouse, and the other things. So that's great. I love the tip setting. That's a pretty cool tool. You got one more? I got a cool tool. He's, he's, not, he's not a painter. Not a painter. I painted. <laughs> so this is another cool tool. This is the neutralizer AC. So how many people have had troubles, you know, maybe uh, matching metallic colors and uh, bumper covers versus quarter panels and fenders that happens from time to time, metallic orientation gets a little bit messed up. You get some dirt in some of those plastic panels as well. Static electricity in those bumper covers attract dirt. <coughs> so this tool can be used to get rid of that static electricity. It will help keep your paint jobs cleaner on the bumper covers. There's a couple of different organizations that make a tool like this, pretty cool tool. And it will also help with that metallic orientation so you can get better color matches uh, when you're putting, you know, spraying bumper bumper covers next to a you know, you know to a quarter panel or fender, um, even when you you know doing it together, not even you know blending issues, just a you know, color mismatch because of that metallic orientation. Uh, so this is a pretty cool tool that can help you improve uh, your color matches and keep your refinished jobs on your bumper covers and faces and other plastic parts um, dust free. It is an amazing tool. Making the metallic finer and orientation becomes more of an issue in our match than what we're mixing in the uh, mixing out there. So where are my painters? Painters, show some love. How many of you hate the body tech sending over a dead car? Right? It's like they intentionally kill the battery on everything before you get it over in the paint shop. So one of my most poorly used tools in the paint department is in my guns. It seems to be my jump, my jumper box, my battery charger. So I got a great one from Whistler. Great little company in Arkansas. As an Arkansas girl, I'm gonna pump an Arkansas company anytime I can. But this little small battery charger for 50 bucks will jump start any car that you've got in the shop. Um, but the other really cool thing that I like about it is I can go to the OBD port with it. So let's say Body Techs, if you wanna save a battery, do you wanna save a battery, Body Techs? Save a life, save a battery, thank you. Um, I can put this in when I know I've gotta disconnect the battery, I'm gonna be welding. On today's cars, how many presets do they seem to have? Radio stations seat position, cell phone memory, all these things that the car has. I can put this to the OBD port, I can plug it in, I can do a setting save, it will save all my presets. I can disconnect the battery, I can repair the car, and when I reconnect the battery, all my presets go back on the car. And for 50 bucks, I can have a few of these floating around the body shop, because I'm gonna have more than one car at a time in there that I'm gonna be disconnected on. Whistler's got a second tool for me. You see it popping out here, it's called the Flex LED light. So they range from $20 to $30, depending on the sizes, different sizes, magnetic, slap them anywhere on the car, undercarriage to your frame machine, your bench, bend it anywhere you want it, LED light.
light, different levels of brightness. I can put them in my pocket, I can carry them around with me, but I love the magnetic feature of them and they're just easy peasy. Kids Christmas present picked up. Stocking stuff for you, Jason. Right. All right. What else you got over here? What you got? Uh, oh, maybe a couple no. of on the screen. I brought the paint love this year because that's where the money's made, right, Peter? We make the money, we the last thing the customer sees and the first thing they notice when they come in. So Sada always has a couple of great things for me and Steve to show this year. There are about five new products in the booth from a color light uh, to we do have the new, uh, the blowers are out again. But I got two guns this year. Uh, there's the limited edition 5000, so every year at, uh, at SEMA we roll out a limited edition. This year the theme is the Aviator. So I guess it took Sada about 100 years to realize that they've been calling themselves Sada Jet, and that was kind of also a plane. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. crazy. So as you see, we have the Come Fly With Me theme. So this is a pop culture 1960s throwback to the heyday of uh, aviation, and it's called the Aviator Gun. And the 5000 comes in the RP, also comes in the HVLP edition. But we rolled out something really crazy cool this year. It's the 1500 Salt Gun. So it's a great gun, price point $5.95. If you get into a solid gun, comes with the RP and the HVLP, and it is designed for your low VOC base coat solvent. So national rule, low VOC solvent. It's got a great wide uh, spray pattern. So when I say that, it's not just the, the height of my fan size, but it's the width of my fan size. So if you're spraying a, a low VOC national compliance solvent, you know that wetting out that panel is real important, and this gun's been designed for that. Two, no two nozzle sizes for it, great price point. Really cool blue and black. That's so I'm very excited. Very cool tool for me and my paint shop. Your shirt. It does match my shirt, doesn't cool. it, Jason? How cool. funny that that happened that way. Yeah. Hey, so last year uh, we were talking about uh, self-piercing rivets and rivet guns, and uh, we talked about the PR5, and we brought it back this year, but not because of the SPR features that the gun offers, but because of a new feature. When you're working on F-150s, Ford does not allow self-piercing rivets to be installed on the replacement panel like we did this morning. So what they require is either aluminum make plug welds, that's one option that they allow, or blind rivets in a lot of cases, but typically SPR guns aren't capable of installing blind rivets. But what ProSpot now has done, they have a new cool tool, cool tool that's available, that's an adapter for the PR5, where you can install blind rivets now with it. So you can now repair this F-150 with the PR5 SPR gun, uh, and this uh, this blind rivet adapter, so that's a pretty cool tool. And it is a great saving, so I am loving the fact that this year, if you walk around the show, down the show floor and you start talking to equipment manufacturers, you're going to find that they're they're looking for ways to let, let one tool be able to work with you in your shop and you're not having to buy four and five of the same thing, and it's just fantastic to see. That's a pretty cool tool, and since we're talking about the F-150 box, another cool tool we picked up uh, this week while we're here is this uh, bed, this truck bed lift uh, kit here. So what we can do is unbolt our box, unbolt the bed, rather than trying to lift it up with uh, a bunch of people. We can slide the tool in there, extend the arms, put some clamps on here. These will actually adapt, they will go onto the uh, tailgate as well. However, this vehicle does not have that part of the component stall. So we're using some, uh, some fasteners here instead. Lift, lift the bed off the truck. How many of you have taken three, four off? guys in the shop to take a bed off the truck right now? Wouldn't that be amazing to keep production going? One guy can do it all. Lower the truck, lower the bed back on there. It's pretty cool, cool. That's a very cool tool. That's a very cool tool. I like that one a lot. Well, and since we're kind of uh, back in this area, we're going to use another one of our pro spot props here. We're going to talk about this MIG Buddy. This is a pretty cool tool here as well. So, not all MIG welding, not all MIG welders have a nice little system here like pro spot has to hang your gun cables on. Usually, you got them, you know laying on the floor, you put them on top of the car, you drop it here, and also you got you know, wire spooling everywhere. You drive over them, you do. The drive yeah. over them, so this cool tool, it's got a magnetic stand, it's got other adapters, you can put it wherever, and you can put your mid gun torch in here to hold it, keep it, keep it in position where you need it. Great for schools as well, so if you're working on welding tables, great thing, we use these for our JLR training and protection in Appleton, real cool tool. Do what you need to do with your hands. Guns right there, easily accessible. Pretty yeah. cool tool. Very cool tool. I gotta get me some of those. That's I, going home with me. I got a guy. Turn your back, man. I know it's I, I know you a guy. guy. I got a guy. You got a guy? Got a All right. Guy. So while we're on the topic of welding and kind of let's talk a little bit about welding safety and what's changing. So shop owners, you got out in the, in the shop. You probably got five or six guys working today. One guy's gonna go grab the welder. He's gonna start working on a car, right? How many of you got welding curtains that partition the working technician from the technician next to him? protecting the eyesight, doing all the protection, right? We don't have a lot of welding curtains 
things out there and some of the things that stopped us for a while is light and being able to see and the same thing that happens when we go up onto the frame racks. Well, Carliner has, and I couldn't get the whole booth brought over here for you, but launching this year at SEMA is what's called the Brilliant Solutions. And what it is is it's LED lighted curtains. So everything from your welding curtains to your aluminum partitions to your safety bays, even down into your bench racks, getting the light to the technicians, protecting the technicians, and making it easier to work. Because half the time I know when I've, I've like jammed a thumb or done something wrong is because I was kind of working in the dark underneath the car. So that can be a challenge. Yeah, so that was, that's a very cool tool. Please make your way over to Carliner, take a look at those lighted curtain solutions, and be thinking about how you're protecting the technicians in your shop. Not just the one holding the welder with a welding helmet, but your OSHA compliance means that the technician next to him needs to be protected as well that's not working on that car. Safety is important. Safety, safety, safety. And what do you got here? I got, so last year I rolled out and told you guys about the, the tape thing from uh, Collision Edge. You rolled. I rolled it. I see what I did there, Jason? That's why I'm the marketer, you're the technician. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> So this year tends up the game a little bit and he's got the tape caddy available to you. We've also got the two inch caddy now. So it's fully magnetic. How many of you shop owners are losing lots of rolls of tape because they're wet, they're on the floor, they're rolled over, and tape's expensive, right? And you seem to be buying a lot of it. Well, the magnetic tape thing can go with you. Now with the caddy, it can stay on my hip, whatever size I want. If I happen to be working on the car and I want to just put it up on my car, looky there, it's magnetic there. It can go anywhere with me. Like we said, we got multiple sizes in it. Fine lines coming out really, really soon. The other thing the tape caddy does for me, I got a place for my razor blade so that I never lose it. How many of these have we dropped in the grates over the years <laughs> that we didn't have to? I've got a, a little Velcro here and a magnet as well. So it's one of the greatest things. I keep it on my hip. He finally has them in stock, Tim. What the heck took so long? But please go see him at the booth, learn more about the tape thing, which this would be just the tape thing. And if you notice how easy it is to roll out and tape all the way down the car if you need to, but you'll never lose another roll of tape. And are those available in different sizes? Yeah, so the, we got regular quarter, we got uh, two inch, we've got fine line coming. Whatever size of tape you're using, Tim's got a solution for you. But I'd make sure I take him a couple of caddies as well. That's a cool tool. Uh, yeah, does, it's very cool. Does he have anything else cool? He does have another thing else cool. So we also showed you last year some of the estimating tools from Collision Edge. We had the small pin viewer board for taking your photos and documenting your damage to the insurance partners. He's facing how much how many of your estimators are on the phone day after day being asked to retake pictures? Hey, I don't see that dent. Can you take another picture? That doesn't look like a six hour dent. It looks like a two hour dent. Can you take another picture? Well, the dent viewer boards did that and did it very well, but we had a lot of requests for bigger truck side panels. How do I show that damage? How do I hold and move it around? And so now the larger dent viewer board is available freestanding. It's got the feet on it. You've got the white side for your darks, your darks for your lights. It's magnetic. You'll be able to take all your pictures, show all of your damage, document it completely, send it off and get those estimates paid faster without wasting time running back out to the car two or three times taking new pictures. All of that time that I'm not running around taking pictures, I can be researching OEM repair data and upping my estimates. That's a great, that's a that cool, cool tool. That's a cool tool. What's your next cool tool you got to actually? Man, I'm on a roll. Yeah, All right. Out. So this is the total automotive sanding system from 3M. You've probably seen it a lot advertised around lately. Contaminant control is becoming a big deal in the body shop. We've got to get that under, under control, really. Not just for safety, for what we're breathing in while we're working. Can't sand with just a dust mask anymore. But also speeding up production, keeping the shop clean, not carrying over those body contaminants into the paint department. So the vacuum sanding, total sanding system for 3M is an amazing tool to use. Um, it is now out fully across the United States. You're going to be able to get it anywhere. And out in the parking lot, so if you go out past the Exalta paint booth out there, you'll see the 3M booth. We've got three of them out there. You can come and take a demo, sand some panels, go through the different grits of the abrasives, see it work, see it work for you, and how you might be able to put it in your facility. But start thinking about contamination control in your shop. It's a cool tool. Cool tool. Hey, uh, since we're talking vacuum, right? we're going to our next, right? uh, our next vacuum, our dust extraction system from ProSpot. Uh, this one's a little bit unique compared to some of the other sanding tools that are out there because it does not run on electricity. This is all fully pneumatically operated, so uh, only air. And one thing that's really cool with this tool is how heavy it is. This thing is unbelievably light. Now this one might have a little bit of dust in or something. But the, but the, so they've got one for the steel and they've got one for aluminum. 
Uh, the difference, the only difference between the two systems is the uh, the lines on the steel one are not conductive. The ones that are on the aluminum system are conductive. So you can actually ground it. So I think we've heard concerns about aluminum dust and the potential for explosivity. They built that in the system. So as that dust is going through there, it's actually grounded and won't, uh, won't cause any issues with that. Again, it also helps us in fully matic as well. So that's a pretty cool tool. And one extra feature of this one is, you know, it's great you can sand on the, the hood when it's on the car, the deck when it's on the car, but a lot of times we're taking panels off the cars. Now we got to try to find a place to put them. Well, this tool actually comes with a stand. Whoa. Sorry, everyone's <laughs> so this one actually has a stand that you can put down, adjust the light bulb. You can adjust the legs on it. I got you. I got you. Adjust the legs on it. Put your panel on here. Use your tool, your cool tool, and uh, go on your merry way. Yeah, and what I really like about this one is that it is pneumatic only. So for the for the total automatic stance, I need electricity and I'm going to need air. For that, just being completely pneumatic, it easily moves around the shop. Those containers are about five pounds, a little under that. So anyone can just pick it up and run with it all around the shop. Even I can carry it around. So it is definitely a... Bring it on the brain. Oh. Bring it like a plane back. I could bring it. Would that be a carry-on? Can we make a video of me trying to put it in the carry-on? Put your luggage and take this from the luggage. That would be fantastic with my own table for eating in the airport. So we got uh, two, just two more final tool, cool tools. Um, first, I want to let you know, for those of you that aren't watching Collision Hub, and those aren't watching the Collision Hub Network News Monthly feature, you're missing a lot of great information. Um, interviews with subject matter experts from all around the country, uh, great content, we've got some iCar content on, on there from time to time. Our iCar 360 videos have been featured on Collision Hub. Uh, the Collision Hub Network News. It's a great, uh, it's a great show. It's on Collision. You go to CollisionHub.com. Uh, go to the Collision Hub YouTube page. Lots of great content. Lots of great information on there. So it's a very valuable resource. A real cool tool for you to for you to check out. And I've got one more tool for you too, Chuck. If you can switch us over here. So has anybody heard anything about pre-scanning or post-scanning or collision repair diagnostics or? post repair calibration in the last couple of days. It's been uh, a pretty hot topic. A little bit. We're, 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 we're a little into it. A little bit into it. So yeah. ICAR has been doing a lot of work around collision repair diagnostics. We've been doing a number of repairability summits, bringing subject matter experts in to talk about technical issues, uh, to talk about uh, how we can go through best practices and repair these vehicles properly, make sure we're identifying diagnostic trouble codes, identifying advanced driver assist systems, and just a ton of work. So we hear a lot about pre-scan, post-scan, the one conversation that we're not hearing as much about that we really need to start talking about is, these, is post repair calibration. A lot of these systems, your lane departure warning systems, your lane keep assist, your adaptive cruise control, blind spot, cross traffic, on and on and on, they require recalibration under a lot of different conditions. So what ICAR's done is we've spent uh, thousands of hours doing research of OEM procedures to get the information to you more quickly. So rather than spending your valuable time during the damage analysis and estimating process, trying to find out whether or not you have to calibrate these systems, we've done that work for you. So we launched this week, we got about 85 to 90% coverage on the 2016 model years, and by the end of this year, we're gonna have 100% coverage on 2016 model years. So if you go to rts.icar.com, we're linked there from icar.com, if you're an iCar Gold Class facility, if you're an iCar Platinum individual, if you're a board member, if you're an iCar member, a, a committee person, instructor, 110,000 people plus have access to this information today. If you go to rts.icar.com, you'll see we got a little banner up here for our calibration search. On the left-hand side, it says OEM calibration requirements search. If I log into there, I can pull up a make, model, and year. I'm going to do a uh, Ford F-150 because uh, I know from that iCar 360 video. Well, we just fixed it, so we got to worry about what we got to calibrate. So that's right. So we're going to pull up the uh, F-Series pickup here. And we're going to select the 2016 F-150. I'm going to log in uh, using my iCar, my iCar credentials. Everybody write that down. Take a minute, it's going to go to Chicago, go to that forum, make sure that I'm uh, able to access this information. Apparently today you have been re- It's, re all, the, it's all the Cubs people party in Chicago uh, that are probably okay. messing it up. Yeah. So you can see that this vehicle, now this is not the vehicle that's right in front of you at that time. This is letting you know this vehicle has the following options. Your, your vehicle may or may not have the features, but these are the options that are available on the F-150. So you can see 
They've got a 360 degree camera. They've got an active park assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, inclusion brake, inclusion warning, lane departure warning, keep assist, rear view, rear cross traffic, park assist. So a ton of advanced driver assist systems on this vehicle are available. So one thing that's been going to ask, a lot of people have been asking is, well, I turn the, I turn the, turn the ignition on, there's no lights on the dash. Everything must be fine, right? And that's not necessarily the case. So a lot of these advanced driver assist systems don't have a lamp. The dash lamp, I, uh, Eric Mendoza, the Toyota, made a great point that never, I never really thought about before. The lights on the dash, that's for the customer. That's letting them know, hey, you've got a check engine light, you've got an airbag light, an ABS light, you need to take your car to, to get serviced. The diagnostic trouble codes, that's for the technicians. So the dash lamps, don't, they're not for us, they're for the customer, so that they can identify when they've got an issue with their vehicle. So we're letting people know whether or not there is a DTC or whether there is a mill that this system will set. Because some of them do have mills, again, letting the customer know, hey, your lane departure warning system isn't working right now, we might want to bring it in. So some of them do have do set mills on the, on the dash, others do not, but they, a lot of these will set DTCs, so if there's an issue with that system, it will set a DTC in many cases, but not all cases. So a lot of this, the, the, the rear cameras that were just, are just a normal camera, no, doesn't need to know how heavy something is or how far something is away. What it needs to know is it just needs to see. So a lot of those don't, even, don't have DTCs that will set with the system. Uh, so you can also see which uh, cameras and or sensors are responsible for the operation of that system. So if I look at adaptive cruise control, I see there's a sensor behind the front bumper cover grill area. If I click on that, it's gonna let me know what Ford calls that system. So we're calling it, you know, adaptive cruise control. We're, we're identifying the location of the vehicle and our generic term for it. We're gonna list out what they call, so Ford calls it their cruise control module. And it's letting you know that if you remove that sensor, it has to be recalibrated, it has to be re -aimed. We're also letting you know which systems that system is responsible for. So that particular cruise control module is responsible for the adaptive cruise control, collision warning, and collision braking. So what if we take the can we take that sensor off, put the sensor back on there, and we don't aim it, or we aim it improperly, and let's say we got it pointing toward, towards the sky where it doesn't belong. It can no longer see that vehicle in front of it. It can't anticipate that vehicle, that collision braking, that collision mitigation, that adaptive cruise control may not work properly, and putting our customers back in the harm's way potentially, and uh, putting, you know, potentially causing another collision. We're also letting you know if the system isn't calibrated or is calibrated improperly, will that set a DTC? So maybe a different DTC, but we're letting you know if you do it improperly, will it set a DTC, yes or no? Whether or not a scan tool is required, and if there's any special tools or equipment, whether it's a, a, an aiming target, um, the, the, the floor mats for four for the 360 degree cameras, uh, the special tool, he says special tool required, the special tool required for the calibration, this one happens to be a level. Uh, we're also letting you know if there are other parameters that uh, might require you to take the vehicle for a test drive or there's a, let's see. So we're also putting notes in there. So you can see this one says, on vehicles equipped with trailer reverse guidance, this procedure also performs the trailer reverse guidance. We're you know, putting some special notes in there as well. So again, as you're going through the damage analysis process, identifying these adaptive, uh, advanced driver assist systems, identifying the trouble codes that might be associated with them, going through doing your OEM research, gathering that information, you can better build a repair plan. So when the vehicle's ready to go on Friday, it's ready to go on Friday. You're not sending it back to the dealership because you missed something on it. We can calibrate the system, we can know that we're giving our customer a car back that's gonna perform properly, gonna function the way they design it to, and uh, it's just uh, all around, so that's, you know, it's, it's, it's all about complete safety and quality repairs. A very, very cool tool. So, you know, if we can drive home a point to you today, you know, I always tell people about 20 years ago when I started in the business, as a technician, I can have five skills, and those five skills can fix pretty much any car that came in, those, in the shop. I can fix a dent, I can pull a frame, I can replace a panel, I can weld, I can paint, I can do everything. Those skills just aren't true anymore these days. We're really working on rolling computers. 
So even if I remove the sensor or I have frame damage and I'm having to realign the car, there are so many things on there that have to be replaced. When an OEM issues a statement on scanning and recalibration prior to delivering the car to the customer, folks, there's a reason they're doing that. So I got a shop in California, Jason. Uh, did not do the calibration. Thankfully, they had a rule at their shop that was uh, test drive. It was a lane departure warning system. It was out of calibration, so it was not seeing the proper space. The owner of the shop happened to be the one doing this test drive. He goes to merge to get on the freeway. The lane departure system now believes that he is getting off of the road, and it goes to correct him. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Can you imagine a consumer, the customer had picked up their car, and maybe that had been them at that time? Would they have then panicked and maybe overcorrected? Would they have crossed lanes of traffic? What could have happened? So making sure that you're doing what the OEMs require, that you're using this tool and looking it up, it is one of the most amazing cool tools that you can have. The other most amazing cool tool that you can have is education. So knowing what's changed on today's cars, not assuming that yesterday's technology applies to today's vehicles, Staying up to date with your OEM classes, your iCar training, and continuing education for technicians and estimators, that's the best tool you can have. I don't think some of the shops know that it's getting a lot of